women in the audience that were hilarious and laughing and mm -hmm. screaming, which was in interesting. And then I sat in the audience for about five minutes. The longest five minutes of your life? <laughs> <laughs> Stupid Girl was interesting. It was in inspired by that Ariel Levy book, uh, Female Chauvinist Pigs, about raunch culture, or partly inspired by that. I actually, once I wrote that song, things started coming to me, yeah. sort of, and that was one of the things that I found after I'd done the video. Oh, I'm sorry, I've got that yeah, the wrong yeah. way around. But they're tied in together. Yes. Can you tell me what it is that's... The that's way that she explains it in her book is a lot more eloquent, and um, she has a lot more statistics to back it up. <laughs> I just go with feeling. Yeah. Um, it's very hard to put statistics in a chorus, though. It is. <laughs> $150 billion cosmic... Cosmetic surgery industry. It's too many. <laughs> Carry the two. <laughs> no, it would be hard. But can you, can you summarize what it is that's stirring you up about uh, sort of sexed up, dumbed down girls? I can try. Yeah. There's a new tabloid every six weeks, it seems. Um, there's one force fed image of what a woman is supposed to look like, how she's supposed to act, how many big words she's allowed to use in a paragraph what shoes she, she should have. Um, in order to be sexy, you have to be stupid. Um, in order to be successful, be less challenging. Don't contribute anything to the world because it's not cute. Um, just all of these just perpetuating stereotypes that I just find so boring and so nauseating. If I want to find a strong woman, I have to Google her or look for her. If I want to find out who's divorcing, I can just open up a magazine. Uh, the, you know, there's references, very clear references in that clip, for, you know, to all our favourites, Paris Hilton and Jessica and Nicole Richie and so on. Have you met any of these girls? Yes, and um, I don't think any of them are stupid. So um, why you can't be that stupid? successful and be that st and be stupid? I think it's an act, and it's the act that I can't respect. But f sort of what I was doing with Stupid Girls goes against my idea of feminism because feminism is st um, supporting other women first and foremost but the problem that I have where the conflict come in, comes in is I can't support that I can support them I can't support that the action so I'm still trying to figure it out you said there have been times where you've used your sexuality as part of your image have you ever felt suckered by that culture that no you're... for the one for the sole reason that I don't think there's anything wrong with being sexy or sexual um, or sensual um, I just don't think it comes with a price tag of dumb. I think that, of course, I'm, I'm a very sexual person. I do love to be naked. I think the entire world should be a nudist colony, but <laughs> I do. So you haven't been to my house, Pink? <laughs> no, but I've heard about it. Is that right? <laughs> um, yeah, but at the same time, I can be... I can try, at least. I'm not going to say I'm sexy, but I can try and be sexy. I can feel sexy, and then I can tell you about how to log on to a PETA website and how to support animals and create no fur policies at, at the doors of clubs in New York City or um, write letters to Prince William and, you know, I can, I use my, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with shopping, there's anything wrong with escapism. I'm just saying I would love to see a little bit more balance. That's all I'm about. The, the group who are most pressured probably by the, by the need to be hot, be sexy, are adolescent girls. Yes. You get a lot of letters from adolescent girls. What sort of things do they say to you? At first it was, I love your hair. <laughs> and then it got... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, thank you. Uh, <laughs> and oh, then, the art of letter writing isn't yes. dead, is it? No. <laughs> And then it became more of um, songs like uh, Just Like a Pill started coming out and Don't Let Me Get Me and Family Portrait was a, a, a big one for a lot of people. The letters started changing to thank you for being different, thank you for not you know, going out there and abusing yourself to be stick thin, thank you for speaking your mind. Um, and now it's almost become like I joke that it's, for me albums are more like group therapy for 9.99 because it's more like, okay, um, I live with my grandfather, my mother just died, he was raping her, now he's raping me, and my dog just died, and I was gonna kill myself today, but I put your album on and I think I'm gonna live another day. It's very inspiring for me and humbling and 
I understand now why I'm here, I guess. You know more about adolescent turmoil than, than a lot of people. And in fact, you describe yourself on this album. You talk about that pissed off, complicated 13 year old girl. Yes. And you were an angry 13 year old. Uh, in fact, I think we got a photo of you. It would have been at around this age. And oh. you, you, you certainly look angry that someone's put you in that top. I was. <laughs> you should have seen the pants. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, were you, uh, what were you so angry about? That was around the time where my parents finally split up, and I think I was still reeling um, from, from the five days I think I'd spent in a quiet house. I wasn't used to it being so quiet. And how did your anger over the years express itself? Um, well, my dad left, and then I figured out that I had a lot more freedom without him there, and the house was actually a much more peaceful place without them fighting all the time. So I did a lot of drugs, ran away from home, and pretty much lost my mind um, up until I was about 15 years old when my mom kicked me out, dropped out of high school, had a record deal six months later, and haven't had or touched a drug since Thanksgiving of 95. It's interesting, though. You say you did drugs, but... That was a huge whole life story in about 30 seconds. That was good. <laughs> You say you did drugs, but you used to, before you took them, you used to look them up to yes. check what they well, did. Well, both my mothers are nurses. Ah. Very much into the medical books. So you were like a rebel with a get-out clause. Yeah. <laughs> That's very... I like to be educated. I wanted to know what I was putting in my body and, and, you know, why do you wake up with a hangover when you drink? Well, that's because, you you know, your brain swells and da, 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 and, and I want to know what ketamine in it. Oh, it's horse tranquilizer. So maybe I shouldn't take as much as they give a horse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Very smart to leave your options open for the Kentucky Derby. Well done. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's interesting, though. That shows that, like, even though you're rebel rebelling and angry and, you know, all that adolescent at sea, that you were still, still had your head. I was still a control freak. Yeah. <laughs> you, were, you had a reputation as being a tough kid. Is that how you saw yourself? Yes. I still have that reputation, but it's, it's um, less and less deserved, I think. Your dad was a Vietnam vet, yeah. and he used to... I have this image of this sort of Pink Panther thing he used to do with you, where he'd train you up in self-defense. Yes. What did he do? Yeah, he's insane. <laughs> I grew up with rocket launchers in my garage. Um, he wanted me to know how to defend myself. Mm. I think he wanted sons. Um, and I had an older brother, and I was completely a tomboy. And I wanted to learn how to wrestle. I wanted to learn how... If someone touches you like that, you can twist their wrist around and put a seven-foot-tall guy on the floor, which I've seen my dad do, which is pretty exciting. Um, yeah, and I'd walk around a corner, and he'd clothesline me, and I'd be on my back reeling, and he'd say, always be on your toes. <laughs> <laughs> Things like that. So it was like the Pink Panther. Every time you came home, you didn't <laughs> know where he was coming from. <laughs> so yeah. if you can put a seven-foot guy on his back just like that, you must be awesome with foreplay. <laughs> in a slightly less violent way. Sure. And, <laughs> and maybe that's, that's been too personal. You, you, you uh, it's maybe. too late for too personal with me. Is that right? You took the name Pink partly uh, inspired by Mr. Pink from Reservoir Dogs. Yes. But also because you blushed. Were you not as tough as you were making out? No, the most sensitive people come off as the most tough because our shell, our shell has to be that much harder than everybody else's so that the mush inside of us doesn't get bruised every time we hit a corner too hard. So what sort of stuff made you blush? Oh, anything, really. Um, the, the odd instances where someone would compliment me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, no one used to be able to watch me as I sang. I made them turn around. So when someone complimented you, is that because you saw yourself as an unattractive person or an untalented person? Absolutely. Yeah? Yes. Singing was the one thing I knew I was good at. It was the only way I could get people to shut up and listen to me. Your parents at one point uh, banned you from watching MTV because they thought it was inappropriate. So yeah. when you said, I want to drop out of school and be a singer, <laughs> are we talking shouting matches here? The shouting matches started when that picture was taken. Um, my mom tells me that the year I turned 12, I cried every day. And that was, I think, 9, 10, 11, 12 was like a... A dark period. But I always said, since I was in kindergarten, I'm going to be a singer. I, mean, I, I know you're not okay with it, but you're going to have many years to get used to it. 